Welcome back to Issues of Faith. We are talking with Vanderbilt adjunct professor Elizabeth Caldwell about um, a new uh, children's story Bible, um, Growing in God's Love, a story Bible, uh, and, a, and a kind of a, a new take on a lot of um, these stories that children are told. Uh, and a fascinating way that you put it together. Now, I want to I want to go through some of these. One that I remember as a child was Jonah, Jonah and the whale. I believe he he, he was eaten by a whale mm -hmm. and lived in there for three days. Mm -hmm. I know I've seen storybook after storybook mm -hmm. um, with that depicted. Right. So. What have you seen, and, and what, how do you treat it? It's always in there. No, you can't. You can't do a story Bible. And of course, not. You have to do Jesus. Of course, that's a given. And you have to do the biggie, the biggie stories. You know, the, the mainly the men's stories have to always be included. And you have to get creation. You've got to get the Noah and the flood, and you've and the ark, and you've got to have Jonah. And why? I mean, what do you, you remember the story? And right. you remember what else do you remember? All I remember is really that he's he's eaten by a whale. Right. And I think he he traveled with the whale for a while and mm -hmm. then he survives he comes out alive yeah and, and, and your questions were how in the world could you survive in a way so as an adult you, you come back and you look at a literal a literal question really and I did actually yes yeah mm -hmm. exactly so um, and that's what children will do too now it's a fun story and the whale is always in it and, and children, it's, it's lodged in your memory bank a lot of times because you've seen that picture of that fish and that's why they we Children's Bible story books love the animal stories. Now, the, the Noah's Ark story is, is a hard story. I mean, really, do you really want to teach that to kindergartners? We put it on our walls of our Sunday school rooms. Do you really want it there? Because what happens when the water rises? The only people that make it are the ones who are on the ark. So if a, a wise child is going to ask, well, what happened to everybody else? And that's a great question. And so you push back behind the Noah story, and what's it a story about? Wiping out the world. It's a yeah, it is. It's a story about loss, but it's also a story about recovery. So if, right. you, if you're trying to get behind the story to say, well, what it means to have for me today, we're always experiencing loss in our life, and hopefully recovery. Jonah. It's always remembered because of that, just what you remember, and you're a great example of big fish. Well, it's really more than a story about a big fish, and if you have to push it behind what kind of writing it is, it's really. Uh, it's really a miracle story in some ways. It's a story about a prophet. Jonah was a prophet called by God. Go to Nineveh, tell the people how bad they are, and Jonah didn't want to go. He didn't. He didn't want to. Do, he didn't want to go to these people. They were his mortal enemy. So he jumps the ship. He tries to escape the job gave him that, that God gave him to do, and he ends up they cast him over and he gets inside the whale and that's the story you remember and they're wonderful illustrations of uh, in story bibles of Jonah inside the whale pushing against the walls of this huge fish and children remember this fish well we may or may not have good, made a good decision about the art for this story because we've got Jonah, we've got go to Nineveh, we've got the boat, we don't have the big fish. Now, some people might find that atrocious that we left out the big fish because children do love big fishes, but really it's not a, that's what kids remember. Mm -hmm. It's really a story about difference and diversity. The Ninevites were different from Jonah. He didn't want to go. It's kind of like the Bible story, and, and the Bible is covered with stories of difference and diversity. If you think about, is there one story in the Bible that God wants us to remember? Well, maybe love, of course, is always at the top of the list. God wants us to love and care for other people, but God wants us to learn how to live together with this difference that God created. So it's really, we have two stories in the Bible story book. Jonah runs away, and then the second story, a second chance for Jonah that Jonah gets a second chance to to redeem himself and to follow what God said. So he goes to the Ninevites, you know, um, do, do repent. And we ask the questions of why do you think they listened to Jonah? Um, have you ever walked away from something that you knew you should do? Did you get a second chance? Write a story about second chances. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to communicate in this story that um, sometimes we, we're asked to do something we really don't want to do, um, and why are we being asked to do it? And um, and, and and in telling the story, helping children see that um, 
living with difference is a challenge for all of us. And so there, you weren't the only person to work on this. You said there were 25. Yeah. 25 people yeah. worked on this. How, how did that debate go when we're talking about something, again, like Jonah? Mm -hmm. it, uh, is there a group that says, oh, we, we should put the whale, and there are mm -hmm. a group that's going, no, we shouldn't, mm -hmm. and here, how, how, how did that go? Well, um, there are two levels of work here. First of all, there's the level of the story writers, and we had um, basic instructions for them of what they were to do. We, we would require them, I have a co-editor, uh, my good friend Carol Wareheim, we required them to submit one story, and we heavily edited it, this story, and so that you want a consistency of writing, so 300 words, and you want a consistency of writing when you're dealing with that many authors. You want you, you don't want the the writing to be coming out s somewhat the same in style. You don't want lots of difference. Um, we do have some stories that are written in poetry form in rhyme that kids love that I'm really excited about. Um, so uh, the other thing we wanted was different illustrators. And we wanted illustrators that would show um, different um, skin color that would be appropriate for Middle Easterners so they wouldn't look like um, uh, all white faces. Jesus would not be always white. Jesus was Middle Eastern. And that, so our editors chose the illustrators. And there are about uh, 15 of those from um, uh, all across the world, um, mostly in the United States, a few from our inter international. And they were asked to submit drawings and then work on skin tone. So when we were asked to review the illustrations last summer, one of the prime things we were looking for was the c skin color. So we have a varieties of skin tones in this book, some from lighter Middle Eastern to more, much more dark, um, um, darker colors, more African. And why is that so important? I mean, you, you said you reviewed 25 other books. Mm -hmm. Did you find diversity in the other books? Some, ha some are very pleasing. Um, uh, there are a few that I really like that have different illustrators and they've worked on skin color. Some because they use what, what's called, I call a, a, a cartoon, a, a contemporary format. It's what's used a lot in church school curriculum. So it's, and the, and they sometimes they they're very um, bland. They they look like our faces, and that's just n not who these people were in the Old Testament. And um, and so some are better at it than others. Some mm -hmm. simply it's not an issue. Let's just keep on keep on doing it the way we've always done it. For us, in the day and age in which we live, um, um, both the skin color and the depiction of diversity of people, uh, differently abled people, uh, so we have some contemporary illustrations in this as well as, as, as um, biblical. So you'll see some kids in wheelchairs. Yeah, differently abled people. So we're, we were trying to write for an audience that maybe hasn't been addressed before. Because is, for some, it's a radical statement that Jesus was not white, when that's in fact just a fact. Well, in the African American community, they will say, "Well, it's black Jesus, of course, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and is God black?" And they write, they ask good questions. Well, maybe there's just no color, but color is important in how we see it. The other thing that's really important in here is um, um, we have a fa page for families, and a lot of the story bibles will start with mom and dad. Our hope is that this, you might use this to end your day and read it in the evening. We don't talk about mom and dad in this book because families are constructed in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. They're single parent families. There are uh, grandmothers raising you know, grandchildren. There are two moms, there are two dads. There's a mom and a dad. There might be a dead single dad. And so we just, about, simply it's not talking about moms and dads, we're talking about all adults who love children and read with children try this book. And, all right, so we have about, I guess, three and a half minutes left. What's another one? Esther, or is there another story you want to highlight that may show some difference or uniqueness about this? Um, sure. Um, this, um, at, women know that we, there are not that many books, you know, about women in the Bible, and um, uh, Ruth is one, and um, Esther is another one. Um, and Esther is known because the word God is never mentioned in the story. And 
Um, Esther, it, the story begins um, with, a, with a woman named Vashti, who was um, uh, the queen, and the king asked her to do something she didn't want to do, so she quickly leaves the story, and then uh, Esther, um, Esther is called upon, and Esther stands up to the king, and um, it becomes the queen, and so the story ends well. Um, um, but Vashti never makes it into anybody's children's Bible storybook. It's only the story about Esther. Well, we decided to go with um, three pieces of this story, and Vashti gets the first story, which is remarkable because nobody ever really wants to deal with Vashti. She's not there in the story very long. She ex exits very quickly from the scene. But she's important because she said no. Mm -hmm. And in a world where women, as we know, have to learn how to say no to things that they don't want to do, She's important for girls and boys to learn about. And then two stories of, of, of Queen Esther, and who also um, did some very important saying no herself. And the interesting part about the story is there are three different illustrators. So you have one, uh, three different illustrators illustrating the same story. And our editor said that he really wanted children to grow up learning that God has many different faces. and. Um, different ways of working in the world so Esther's going to look different in each of the stories. So where can you get this? Let's say somebody wants to get it, yeah, they're here in Nashville, where, mm -hmm. where can they get mm -hmm. this? Well first of all they could go to Parnassus Bookstore um, which, which has it um, um, in their bookstore. Secondly it's it's published by Westminster John Knox Press so it's available on their website and then it's also available on Amazon. And do you see this um, in Sunday schools or do you see it just you know parents reading it at night to their kids? Sure. Uh, Sunday schools definitely I think it could be a resource in church school rooms. I think also for the churches that have times with children in worship where they come down they do a story because the stories are are, are so short 30 300 words they could be they, they could just be and told um, by, uh, by a good storyteller. And then thirdly, certainly at home, we, we're kind of hoping that parents might reclaim, um, or grandparents or aunts or uncles might reclaim a, a, a time during the day or at night, just to spend a little time with a story and sitting with text um, as a spiritual practice that the spiritual formation of children happens at home. It's not always and only in the church setting. I think it's so important that children know these stories. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Vanderbilt Adjunct Professor Elizabeth Caldwell, thank you for coming on, and thank all of you for watching Issues of Faith. Have a great day, everyone.